Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love Starter. In this video, I'm going to show you the different attribution models you can use inside Google Analytics. I'll walk through the seven standard attribution models and how they give credit to your marketing touch points. We'll look at how you can apply the models using the Google Analytics model comparison tool and how we can find insights to inform our marketing campaigns. Let's get started. Google Analytics has seven different standard attribution models that you can apply using the model comparison tool. The attribution models allow you to control how credit is given to your different marketing touch points based on conversions taking place on your website. Let's take a look at the different standard attribution models. First is the last interaction model. As the name suggests, this model gives all of the credit to the final touch point leading to a conversion. This is slightly different to the attribution models used for the standard reports. The standard reports use the last non-direct click attribution model. So this is the model that will be applied when you're seeing goal conversions and transactions inside all of the standard reports. For example, if you're using the audience or acquisition reports inside Google Analytics, it means that if the last method of accessing the website was direct, then it will step back until there's a known source and medium combination. Next is last AdWords click. This is very similar to the last click attribution model, but if there is an AdWords touch point in the conversion path, then AdWords will receive full credit for the conversion. Then we have first interaction. This is where all of the credit goes to the first touch point. Now, it's important to understand that this will vary depending on the look back window. By default, Google Analytics will use 30 days of historical data. So this will impact the results you see for the first interaction attribution model. The other important thing to consider is the lead time for people converting on your website. If you expect a longer lead time, then using this model probably isn't going to be very helpful. Next is the linear attribution model. This is the first model we're looking at that makes use of multi or mixed attribution, or in other words, where credit is split across multiple touch points. The linear attribution model is simple. Credit is evenly divided across all of the different touch points used to find your website that led to a conversion. Next is time decay, which gives more credit to the final or most recent touch point and then credit diminishes the further back in time we go. The model uses a seven day half-life, which means that if we had a conversion today, then that touch point would receive credit and the touch point seven days ago would receive half the amount of credit from today's touch point. The final standard attribution model is the position-based model. This gives 40% of credit to the first touch point, 40% of credit to the final or last touch point, and the remaining 20% of credit is divided evenly between the middle touch points. You can also make use of your own custom attribution models that can be based on any of the standard models we've covered. Now that we have covered the models, it's time to use the model comparison tool inside Google Analytics. You'll find it under conversions, then attribution inside your reports. When we first load the model tool, we'll see that the default model is the last interaction model. Now, I suggest changing this to the last non-direct click model since this is the model that's applied to the standard reports. Now we can compare up to two additional models. For example, we can compare the last non-direct click model to the time decay model. This now shows us the difference between the two models. So here we're seeing the percentage change in conversions as we shift from last non-direct click to the time decay model. We want to look for significant changes between the models we're comparing. Changes highlighted in green indicate that we're potentially undervaluing the marketing touch point when we use the last non-direct click model. You'll also see negative change highlighted in red. This is telling us that we're potentially overvaluing a marketing touch point when we use the last non-direct click model. If you're just getting started, then I also encourage you to use the multi-channel funnels reports. And in particular, I really like the top conversion paths report because it's an easy to understand visualization. It shows you the different touch points that lead to conversions. For example, we can quickly see there are a number of conversions where people begin on organic and end up converting after coming to our website directly. The report makes it easier to understand the interactions between our marketing touch points 
regardless of the attribution model we're using. So that's how you can use the attribution reports and the standard attribution models inside Google Analytics. How are you using the model comparison tool inside Google Analytics? Are you using attribution to help improve your marketing campaigns? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, then please like it so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.